Hello, my name is Albert van Skoer from the University of Pretoria in South Africa. I have been given the opportunity to give a visual sample of our article entitled The Value of Tufia's Line for New Natal Neuraxial Procedures. This study was done in collaboration with Professor Marius Bosman, also from the University of Pretoria, and Professor Adrian Bosenberg from the University of Washington and the Seattle Children's Hospital. Tufia's line is defined as a horizontal line drawn between the most superior aspects of the iliac crests. And despite there being some contention to its accuracy, it is still the most commonly used method of identifying the correct lumbar vertebral level in adults, and is employed by many medical practitioners to locate the spinous process of L4. However, in order to determine whether Tufia's line can be effectively used to locate the correct level of needle insertion in neonates, this study aimed to determine the vertebral level where Tufia's line transects the vertebral column of a neonatal cadaver sample, and secondly to determine if the above mentioned level changes with the change in position from prone to flexed. In order to do this, 39 neonatal cadavers were carefully dissected after receiving the appropriate institutional ethical approval and also under the guidelines of the South African National Health Act number 61 of 2003. Each cadaver was carefully dissected in order to expose the laminae and spinous processes of the lumbar vertebrae as well as the dorsal surface of the sacrum. During the dissection the two iliac crests indicated with a red line were also exposed and the most superior border of each iliac crest was marked. Using imaging software, each vertebra was divided into thirds and each third as well as each interlaminous space was given a corresponding number. For example, the L4-L5 interlaminous space was numbered 20, while the upper third of L5 was 21 and the middle third was 22 and so on. A straight line was then drawn between the two marked iliac crests and the vertebral level indicated by a corresponding number where this line transected the vertebral column was noted. This was done with the neonate in both a prone and a flexed position. The results showed that when prone Tufia's line crossed the vertebral column on average at the L4 L5 interlaminous space. This level ranged between the lower third of L4 and the L4 L5 interlaminous space. When flexed, Tufia's line crossed the vertebral column at the upper third of L5, with this level ranging between the L4 L5 interlaminous space and the upper third of L5. When the position of the neonate changed from prone to flexed, results showed that on average Tufia's line moved cordially by approximately one third of a vertebral level. When looking at the distribution of the level of Tufia's line, the results obtained from the neonatal sample in a prone position concurred with what Kim et al. found in their study. Tufia's line intersects the L4 L5 interlaminous space in 26% of the sample. This is followed by the middle third of L4 in 21% and then the upper and middle thirds of L5, both in 18% of the cases. With flexion, Tufia's line moved cordially to the upper third of L5 with the upper and middle thirds of L5 being the most common level where Tufia's line transects the vertebral column, both in 21% of the examined sample. The results of this study would therefore suggest that the level of Tufia's line moves cordially with flexion of the trunk. This is an important factor to bear in mind prior to needle insertion. In this sample, Tufia's line was also never found to be more cranial than the upper third of L4 in the prone sample and the middle third of L4 when flexed, while the most caudal level in the prone position was observed at the L5 S1 interlaminous space and at the upper third of S1 when the neonate was flexed. So in conclusion, these results showed that Tufia's line is a reliable means of determining the correct vertebral level in neonates, which is at a level caudal to the termination of the spinal cord.
This is provided that the iliac crests, which have yet to ossify, are correctly identified and the changes to this level that occurs with positioning is appreciated. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the full article.